2 liter HDI engine in the front. That uses an EGC gearbox to run the front wheels. So I think what we have here is a case of the world's first diesel hybrid. Stop that, stop that, stop that. This is the Peugeot 3008 Hybrid 4. Now it's actually started. Actually, here's the, look at, you know, turn the fan off. That's it started, okay? Nothing, because it's running on electricity. Now watch, oh, we have to put in the diesel engine for a second because I'm a bit low on battery because I actually drove here on electric. Now, we pull away. And you can see here I'm using a diesel engine. Now the difference is why this hybrid works and other hybrids don't work as well. See them cows, they put out more CO2 than I'm doing at the moment, even with the diesel engine running, okay? Just one of those cows is probably equal to about 10 of these cars, all right? And he's got his head way under the electric fence there, trying to get the good grass. But if you're cute, like I just did there a second ago, so I want to accelerate fast, now I want to stop accelerating. Now we're on electricity. See? It's easy. So you put your foot down and you take your foot off. You get to the speed you want, you take your foot off, it settles back into battery power and now you maintain speed using just batteries. Brilliant. Now I do find the changeover between electric to diesel is a micrometer on the accelerator pedal and I would wish that it would try harder on a diesel engine for or on the electric engine for me to accelerate and stay in electric mode for as long as it possibly can. Uh, it tends to just flick to the diesel engine whenever you think you might need a bit more power. One good factor is when I lift off, if I lift off at all, I find that you get a massive amount of braking in the car. It's engine braking. It's trying to recharge the batteries using the braking that you're doing. Now, I'm not touching the brakes at all, but it does feel like the brakes have come on. And that's great because that's free electricity. It's free, okay? So I get more electricity for my money straight off just by lifting off, and I feel like it's braking. And that gives me a little bit more electricity. Now, on this, I have four modes. So I have auto, sport, four-wheel drive and ZEV. ZEV is all electric, so it'll run as for as long as it can on electric only. It works well in a town, actually, as you're going through. The big deal of this car for me is that it's a two-liter diesel. Not just that it's the world's first diesel hybrid, but it's a two-liter diesel. Now, I drove to Galway yesterday and back. Uh, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. Uh, and I used an average of 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, that's with two adults, two kids, and a boot full of stuff, including camera equipment, uh, and a pram, and a whole lot. And I drove all the way to Galway, and all the way back at 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers, because it uses, it doesn't mess about. It, it is a two liter diesel on a motorway. That's what it is, okay? And when you reach a town, or you get near a town at all, you find that it's suddenly an electric car. Those people just walked out in front of me because they didn't hear me coming at all. Uh, it is a two, it's, a, it's a hybrid when you reach a town. So once you get down to town speeds, very rarely does the electric, or diesel engine cut in at all. And if you wanted to, you can flick into ZEV mode. So once you get up to speed, a little bit of speed, lift off, it goes into electric mode, and you flick the little switch, and it goes into ZEV mode. Now ZEV mode will run on electricity as far as the battery will allow. Okay, so as far as you can, uh, it will run just electric. Now I'm running on just electric now at the moment, and I'm just on the edge of Port Leash, just coming into the center of it here. And I'm going to attempt, it says about four, four to six kilometers or so, but to get on electric, okay? Um, but I'm going to attempt to run right the way through Port Leash and out the other side on just electrics, all the way through traffic. Okay, now if you put your foot down, the diesel engine will cut in again. That's obviously a safety feature so you can get out of trouble or you can get away from junctions a bit quicker, whatever it is. So here I am at a roundabout, just pulling out now. Again, electric mode only. Just going round and roundabout here. It feels like driving a normal car, although very, very quiet. 
absolutely, there's no noise in here at all. I'm just on electric, I'm up to 43 kilometers an hour. It's running purely electricity now. Uh, I'm decelerating, I try and decelerate as much as you can. So when you come up to a junction, lift off and it coasts up to the roundabout. And as you do, it's recharging the battery instead of using electricity, okay? So straight through this roundabout. And then people walking out in front of me again. Stop walking out in front of me. I know it's quiet, but it's not that quiet. <sighs> now, we're going straight down the hill here so I can lift off and let it coast down the hill. It feels like I'm, I've hit the brakes, but I actually haven't. It does confuse drivers behind you a little bit because they think that uh, you're not braking. And so they keep coming behind you because your brake lights don't come on. Uh, I'm just going to pull into this lane now. I'm going to change lanes here, get through to the other side of it. Coming up to the final set of roundabouts. Decelerate again, speed bump there. Round that corner, indicate here, round this corner. Now it's go uphill here, quite a bit actually. Now, the other day I put it to the test. I went to the shops and back four times in the day on ZEV mode. Right, uh, and once in a while the diesel engine would cut in once the battery started to get really low, which they are at the moment really low, because I didn't start off with a full charge in the first place. Okay, when I left, you seen the diesel engine cut in straight away uh, where it was. Now I'm not using air conditioning here; I have just fans on, all right, but I don't have air conditioning going. And you'll find that once you get as far as it can go, it's still in ZEV mode, but once it gets as far as it'll go, it'll cut in the diesel engine for you anyway. So you don't have to worry. There it is; it's gone now. I'm running out of electricity so the diesel engine is cut in. But that said, it's still a diesel engine. It's a two litre diesel. It's not a petrol engine that's going to gobble fuel on you the whole time. So at the moment, I'm passing through the town now using 4.2 litres per hundred kilometres ish. And it's recharging the battery while it's doing it. Now, I'm going back to auto. It does that automatically. I can go into sport. Now what sport does, I can feel it lift, it starts to lift up straight away. What it's doing is, it's going to use the two engines combined to give me 200 brake horsepower. That's the plan. And you can actually feel it. And when you put your foot down, it really does want to go. But as soon as you decelerate, it turns back into a hybrid. It immediately starts to recharge the batteries again. Very sensible, very smart, very simple. But it uses four wheels. So you're a four wheel drive now at the moment in sport mode. Uh, it's going to do as much as it can using both engines all the time and all the horsepower is turned on now So it will recharge the battery very quick as I can see already there's three bars back up in it and it holds the corners Very well. Look at that And the gear change is surprisingly smooth for a robotized gearbox. They're normally quite jerky in actual fact I had a Citroen a few weeks back couple of months back, I can't remember, it had a robotized gearbox in it and it made me feel seasick. This, just, this doesn't, it doesn't do any of that. It holds it nicely, it changes gears when you want, and if you really want to be sporty about it, you can flick it back into manual, so you can decide what gear you want to be in. And you've actually got six to choose from. So in sport mode, it's using a two liter diesel engine to recharge the battery, and when I put my foot down, change gears, it uses all the engines, all of them, to give you even more overtaking power. Very simple, very smart, very intelligent. Now, you can also choose four-wheel drive. Now, four-wheel drive will allow you to be able to turn the car into a full-time four-wheel drive. So you can go off-road. Um, it will turn on all its engine power to run all four wheels all the time. Okay, so it's not just going to flick back and forward between two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. It will just stay as a four-wheel drive off-road. Obviously, there isn't off-road tyres on this car, so it's not going to cross a big ploughed field or anything. Um, but it certainly does have the ground clearance to be able to cross a grassy field onto a beach, uh, up into the mountain areas, you know, when you want to get up into that sort of area as well. It's able to do all of that sort of thing, so no worries there either. So 100% stamp of approval on the Peugeot 3008 Hybrid 4. I love it. I don't think I want to give it back, to be honest with you. I have, I think, one more day with it. Yeah, one more day with it. 
um, and I don't I don't want to give it back I don't care I still have half a tank of fuel after doing how many kilometers have I done uh, 519 kilometers since I got it and I still have half a tank of juice left and I'm back on electricity again coming into the town here and I've nearly got a full tank of that electricity as well it is definitely definitely one of the best cars of this type that I've ever driven and the 3008 itself is one of the most practical family cars I've ever had on test so it's still a case of the first diesel hybrid in the world is also the best diesel hybrid in the world